Vienna is one of the most majestic cities in the entire world, with no shortage of things to see and do. In this video, we will share with you how we spent three unforgettable days in Vienna. We arrived in the city early in the morning by train, and after dropping off our luggage we started off our trip by going straight to Steffenplatz, the central square of the old city. Steffenplatz is named after St. Stephen's Cathedral, or Stephen's Dome by the locals. This remarkable church is hundreds of years old and has been an important part of Austria's history. It's free to enter the inside of the church and gaze at the Gothic Romanesque architecture of the interior and imagine all of the history that has taken place. But for a fee, you can also ride a small elevator up to the roof of the church to catch a view of the square and the city and to enjoy the famous colorful roof tiling up close. Once we were finished at Stefan's Dome, it was time to explore the old city by foot. Whether you enjoy shopping or gazing at all the beautiful buildings and statues, you can easily spend an afternoon to an entire day of wandering the streets and soaking in the Viennese life. Within the old church, you can check out the Anchor Clock, which is situated in the oldest square of the city, Hoer Market. The clock itself is neatly decorated with mosaic in an Art Nouveau style, and at 12 o'clock each day, 12 figurines representing 12 different historic figures will parade across the clock, accompanied by famous songs. The figures do take their time, but it is charming to watch. After enjoying some time in the old city, we were getting pretty hungry. So for dinner, we went to Schweizer Hall's, a gastro garden in the Leopoldstadt district, for a classic Vienna schnitzel. Alright, so we had a little bit of the schnitzel so far and it is amazing. But now they're able to eat a little bit. Um, I was able to push off the side and reveal that it actually comes with a nice little section of vegetables. We got, some, of course, some lettuce, some cucumbers, and even, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It seems like pickled apples or something like that. But anyways, it's pretty yummy. So this is pretty filling and, of course, a fun beer garden environment. Now, the best part about our dinner is that we are right next to Prater Amusement Park. The park is free to enter and has a timeless feel to it. There are plenty of rides and activities for all ages to enjoy, but you do need to pay for any ride you go on. The highlight of Prater though is the famous Viennese Ferris wheel, Weiner Friesenrad. Until 1985, this was the tallest Ferris wheel in the world. But despite losing that title, it is still one of the symbols of Vienna's charm thanks to its elegant carriages and the late 19th century design, helping it to star in many famous movies. As the sun began to set, we finished exploring the park before wrapping up our first day in Vienna. We wake up for our second day in Vienna and decided to start off the day with a nice meal at the delightful Central Cafe in the Old City. Opened in 1896, Central Cafe features a gorgeous interior, with a series of swooping arches in the ceilings as well as a historical background. At the turn of the 20th century, Central Cafe became the gathering spot for writers, academics and revolutionaries who resided in Vienna. And you'll even find a statue of one of these patrons, the writer Peter Altenburg, ready to greet you as you come in. To eat, I went with the full breakfast and Dominic went with the healthy breakfast option. We also ordered the famous Cafe Melange, a cappuccino-like drink 
that is made famous in Vienna to go along with our breakfast. And after eating our breakfast, we made sure to check out the amazing cake selection to indulge on our sweet tooth. Alright, so after breakfast, we decided to get a piece of the cake. There were so many selections, it took a really long time to decide. Uh, so what we got here is the apricot sun. It has apricot and elderberry jam on the inside. Um, yeah, so we're gonna see how it tastes. Yeah. We were silly last time, we didn't get a cake. So this time we're making sure we get one. Mmm. <coughs> oh, it's good. Try it. <laughs> Next on our agenda is to check out Hofburg Palace, the former residence of the Habsburg monarchy, and now houses the residence and offices of the President of Austria. You can tour the interior of the palace to see what life was like as a royal, and learn some of the history, and to enjoy the splendor of the Habsburg monarchy. Since we visited the interior of the palace during our first trip to Vienna four years ago, this time we decided to check out a different part of the complex, the Austrian National Library, which is a book lover's dream. The library space is an impressive and wonderful place and features many treasured literary collections that have been collected by the Empire. Heading back outside, you have the option to explore the palace grounds along with a variety of world-class museums, including the Natural History Museum, the National Art Gallery, the Albertina Museum, containing many works by Monet and Picasso, and many more museums found in the museum quarter. It is impossible to visit all of the museums within this part of Vienna, so decide what interests you the most and visit the museum that caters to those interests. Moving out from the city center, a trip to Vienna is not complete without visiting Schönbrunn Palace, the summer palace of the Habsburgs. Easily recognizable by its iconic yellow exterior and first built in the 17th century, the Schönbrunn Palace is a magnificent and expansive palace with over 1,400 rooms. When you visit the palace, you can purchase a ticket for a guided tour of the inside to see some of the many beautiful rooms of the palace. But even visitors on a budget can enjoy Schönbrunn because the incredible palace grounds and gardens are free to explore for everyone. We spent an afternoon taking a walk around and then climbed up the hill to the Gloria at the top where you can relax and enjoy a spectacular view of the palace and the city of Vienna behind it. Day two was a long day on our feet, so we went back into the old city center to treat ourselves to another Vienna schnitzel from the restaurant Griechenweisel, which has a history written all over it, having first opened over 500 years ago in the year 1447. This is a slightly more upscale restaurant, but the attention to detail and the quality really came out in our schnitzel. With our stomachs full and satisfied, we took the rest of the evening to wander around again through the old city to enjoy it as the sun set and the beauty of Vienna shine through a lit up city. To start our third and final day in Vienna, we decided to explore the Nashmacht. At over a kilometer long, Nashmacht is filled with all kinds of goods and plenty of food. It is fun to explore all the different stalls and even grab a meal. Since we arrived at breakfast time, we chose to have a coffee and pastry. 
After our breakfast, we took a short walk over to the next stop, the marvelous Piana State Opera House. Tours of the Opera House run every hour and are available in many different languages. On the tour, we got to see the main concert hall, concession rooms, the Emperor's private room and viewing suite, and we also got to take a look behind the stage to see all the work that goes into making the opera come to life. The tour guides gave a fantastic overview of all the details of the Opera House and the rich history of this famous Viennese landmark. Surrounding the historic old city is the Ringstrasse, a semicircle grand boulevard lined with many of Vienna's most beautiful civic buildings and museums. Constructed in the 1860s on the site of the historic fortifications, the Ringstrasse was conceived to rival the most beautiful streets in the world. There are special Ringstrasse trams that offers a guided tour of the Ringstrasse, but if you want to save money, and just see everything without the tour, you can hop onto a public tram instead to explore this famous street. The Rathaus, or the City Hall of Vienna, is one of the many famous public buildings constructed during the Ringstrasse project. Modeled in a Gothic architecture style, this styling makes the Rathaus different from many other buildings in Vienna. Well, we just finished taking a ride around the Ringstrasse uh, on the streetcar and we noticed that there's a festival going on. It's a film festival and there's lots of food uh, happening here. So we decided to hop off and get some food. And also what's good about this area is that just behind on the other side is the Hofburg Theater, another beautiful building that you can check out. Vienna is packed with plenty of historic sites, museums, and beautiful architecture. And after we finished our lunch, we took some time to try to check out as many of these places as we possibly could. This includes the beautiful Music Viren, which features a lovely golden interior concert hall. Our afternoon also included stops at the wonderful Karl's Church by Karlsplatz and a statue of the one and only Mozart. After a long afternoon of exploring, it was time for an ice cream break. So we decided to try Ice Gleisla, a spot known for well-made ice cream with adventurous flavors. So at the bottom, we got the pumpkin seed ice cream. It actually tastes like pumpkin seed and it's actually really good, despite like what people might think, oh no, it's pumpkin seed, but it's actually really good. Mm. And on the top, we got cookie flavored ice cream, Dom's Choice. For an alternative view of Vienna, make time to stroll along and hang out on the Danube Canal. The canal was traditionally used to help facilitate the trade networks of the city, but in the 1990s the space was converted into a recreational area with walking paths, restaurants, community garden, and the largest legal graffiti space within the city. On a nice summer evening, the canal lights up with activity, people enjoying a drink, meeting together, or just enjoying a nice walk. Our three days in Vienna came and went, and there is much more that we could have seen and visited. If you are visiting Vienna for the first time and want to really savor the culture of the beautiful Austrian capital, then three days is probably just the minimum you should spend here. We had an amazing time, and we will definitely be back for a third trip. Thanks for watching our Vienna Travel Guide video. Another great city that you can visit in combination with a trip to Vienna is Budapest. Click on the box to the left to check out our 3 day Budapest travel guide. And if you enjoyed listening to us struggle with German words, then you really love hearing us try to pronounce Hungarian words. You can also now follow us on Instagram at Domination Travels, we'll post photos daily from our experiences there. And last but not least, please do subscribe to our channel to support us. Until next time, bye!